When I was a rabbi in Nevada, I developed a relationship with the synagogue security guard, Mr. Peters, who happens to be African American. Every week after services Friday night, Mr. Peters insisted on walking me home. It wasn't that the synagogue was in a particularly dangerous neighborhood, but I think Mr. Peters felt a personal responsibility for my safety. During those walks home, we talked about everything from religion to sports to race relations. I look forward to these talks, which often lasted much longer than the time it took us to walk home. Mr. Peters and I have remained in touch from time to time over these past 12 years that I've lived in Connecticut. In watching the events in the world unfold over these past two weeks, I've been thinking about how much I miss those weekly walks with Mr. Peters. He enjoyed talking, and I did a lot of listening. This week, I found myself doing a lot more listening, reaching out to my African-American colleagues with whom I have a close relationship in Weston and in Bridgeport and spent several hours together having conversations that I apologized for never having before. Our Torah and Haftarah portion of Baalotacha deals with the lighting of the menorah, which is one of the most familiar symbols of Judaism, as well as the seal of the state of Israel. Similar to the bush that burned but was not consumed, we are taught that the light of the menorah should stay eternally aflame. Our mystics taught that the center stalk of the menorah represents the light of Torah, which not only illuminates our lives, but also inspires us to work towards bringing light into the world. Being a light unto the nations, or Lagoim, mandates us to build a just and compassionate society based on the teachings and ideals of our Holy Torah. As Jews, we ought to set the example of what it means to treat all individuals created in the image of God with love and with respect. And that is not a light that just turns on and off when current events bring it to our attention. It is our responsibility to ensure that the light is continuously burning. Earlier today, I picked up the phone to call Mr. Peters. And I was halfway through leaving a message on his answering machine when he picked up the phone with tremendous joy and energy. Before anything else, he immediately wanted to hear about how my daughter was doing in Israel and how my parents are managing. And then it was my turn to listen to his thoughts on the pandemic and police brutality. And as he talked, I was teleported back to our Friday night walks. And when it was time to hang up, he said, Jeremy, Shabbat Shalom. And don't you forget, I love you, brother. Shabbat Shalom. And I love you too, brother.